This is WWRD, what would the regulator do? And the question for this video is, what would the regulator do where they find an individual has behaved very badly in the management of a regulated financial services firm? My name is Danny Lawler from Request, and if you're new to our YouTube channel, please do hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so that you're notified of any of our new content, and also, if you like the video, don't be shy about hitting the thumbs up button below. Now, the context for this question is really that in June 2020, the regulator issued a pretty steep fine and disqualification period for an individual under the administrative sanctions procedure. So just to give you some background to that case before we talk about what the regulator would do where they happen upon individuals misbehaving, in that instance, you had an individual who was an executive director and chief financial officer and actively participated in under-reserving technical reserves in an insurance company for a number of years. And as a result, the firm was fined and also the individual was put through the administrative sanctions procedure. Now, the few things that strike me with my regulator's hat on around this are, firstly, it's very unusual to see individuals punished under the administrative sanctions procedure. By my reckoning, over the last 10 years, there's been about 108 administrative sanctions settlement agreements and only seven of those have been with individuals in their own right. So that's around 6%, very, very few. And the reason for that is probably because of the threshold that the regulator needs to prove in order to get an admin sanction over the line for an individual. And that is not only has the firm breached a rule, but also that the individual has actively participated in that. That's quite a high threshold for the regulator to prove which is why you see so few actions against individuals. But if you do read the press statement around this sanction, you'll see the reference to participation a number of times. It's also one of the reasons why the regulator is so keen on the introduction of the senior accountability regime, which will remove that participation requirement and make it easier for the regulator to hold individuals to account where they misbehave in the management of regulated firms. So that's the first thing, quite unusual to see individuals uh, sanctioned, but it does happen. The second thing where you see a misbehaviour is to look at the level of the sanction in this case. Uh, the full amount of the fine was €100,000 and the full amount of the disqualification period was 12 years. So that's a very significant period of time and a pretty chunky amount of change for the individual to pay as part of the sanction. Now, what that shows is, although it's difficult for the regulator to prove an admin sanction, where they manage to do that you as the offending individual can expect to be treated very harshly and to be punished pretty severely. So that should motivate all individuals in regulated firms to do the right thing, comply with the rules that they're subject to. The last thing that kind of struck me as I looked at this particular case and you talk about how individuals perform is the reduction that the individual managed to achieve from the original punishment. So the original punishment was 12 years the actual punishment meted out in this case was an eight-year, four-month disqualification, and the fine was reduced from €100,000 to €70,000. So the regulator is quite open that uh, it is possible where there are mitigating factors to apply a discount of up to 30%, as they did in this case. And in November of 2019, they published their admin sanctions guidance to help individuals and firms and advisory firms to understand the kind of things that the regulator takes into account when they're determining the punishment, both in terms of the severity of the punishment and in terms of any possible mitigation. But the thing to bear in mind, as you, if you do read this press statement around the settlement agreement, is the level of cooperation that was required from the individual in order to achieve this discount. So it said that there was exemplary uh, cooperation by the individual and that they admitted their participation at an early stage. And that's why they managed to achieve this discount of 30%. So if you're an individual, or a firm that finds yourselves in this situation of being involved or subject to a domain sanction, and you'd like to benefit from that discount, uh, be aware that the regulator expects not just the regular level of cooperation, but you really need to go way above and beyond in terms of being very forthright, very forthcoming with information and documentation in order to get that discount. So it's possible, but it does ask a lot of the individual or the firm in order to achieve it. So just to bear that in mind. Okay, so what would the regulator do where they find an individual misbehaving? They will certainly pursue them, albeit it's not terribly easy at the moment because of the standard of participation. But that will change with the SEER regime, and that SEER regime is coming, so be aware of it. 
Thanks very much for watching this WWRD. As I said at the outset, if you liked the video, hit the like button below, and also do make sure to subscribe so that we keep you right up to date with all of the latest content from Request. Thanks very much, we catch you next time.